Remember when it was just two weeks to flatten the curve? Well, here we are three years later, and one of the top journals has an editorial suggesting that we don't get complacent about COVID-19 in 2023. So somehow two weeks to flatten the curve has been stretched out to three years to flatten the curve while we continue to ignore our curves, the obesity, the diabetes, all of the underlying health conditions that contribute to severe infectious diseases. Now, I want to talk about this because this paper, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read the title and this was in Nature. Remember, Nature is a publisher known as a high impact journal. They have multiple sub journals, some of which I used to subscribe to and really like, like Nature Reviews Endocrinology and Metabolism. There's Nature Reviews Obesity, Nature Reviews uh, Immunology, fantastic journals, excellent images that I'm going to share with you in this video. And I could not believe that they had a, a, a piece here about how we need to continue to double down on our public health strategies like masking, hand sanitization, social distancing, and all the works. Because China, which is immunologically naive because they have tried to, so did Taiwan and other countries, tried to attain this utopian zero COVID state, which is completely impossible. No country could ever do this and no country hitherto has ever successfully been able to do this because this pathogen is highly transmissible. It's now so mild that the case fatality rate is lower than the flu, yet people have indelibly inked in their minds thinking that if you get COVID, you're going to die. The statistics, especially when it comes to the variants that are circulating here now in December of 2022, they are not lethal like they once were. In fact, as we reviewed about two weeks ago, the, the reduction in death rate is about 90% lower compared to you know, the early part or, you know, March of 2020, my friends. So it's important that we start to focus on the underlying health conditions. The statistics do not lie. 94.5% of people that died from COVID-19 had on average four or more underlying health conditions. So what killed them? The death on the death certificate, right? It was COVID and diabetes and hypertension and cardiovascular disease or, or Alzheimer's disease and, and so forth. In only 5% of the documented COVID deaths here in the U.S., was SARS-CoV-2 the only thing listed on the death certificate? Okay, so I want to share with you two things. A lot of people are talking about China. Oh my gosh, China, what's going on? This is a direct quote from nature. I think it's important that you understand because people see what goes, remember when Italy was first, there was a lot of cases and people were dying and all these sort of things. Well, here's what's going on in China. Remember, they have tried to attain this utopian zero COVID state, which is, which is not possible like for men for reasons that I mentioned earlier, they say most people in China are immuno immunologically unprepared for Omicron, the dominant strain now in circulation. They have no exposure to SARS-CoV, this SARS-CoV-2 variant, and if vaccinated, have received vaccines only against the virus's original strain. Now, I'll just take a, a quick pause here. Up until September of 2022, those vaccines were targeted for the original strain. That's why you saw so many rare, extremely rare breakthrough cases. I'm being facetious here because many people were getting vaccinated for a strain that was not even in circulation, yet they were surprised when they got infected from the different variants. And we now know, and we've been talking about this, the RNA coronaviruses mutate so quickly. So that this is why we should focus on immune health. We should focus on being healthier, re reverse or, or un uncover the underlying immune dysfunction that makes people susceptible to getting severely ill. And I, I just wanted to share with you a few more papers here that recently emerged about the prevalence of obesity-associated sarcopenia in the U.S. And then we're also going to talk about the strange increase in global excess deaths, not during the year 2020, but during the year 2021. We're going to focus in on that in a moment. But friends, just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing this video. Thanks for leaving a comment if you're enjoying the content. Also, friends, we know it's winter. And that means that your vitamin D levels from cutaneous synthesis from the sun is not optimal. If you live anywhere south, anywhere north sorry, of Atlanta, Georgia, even if you're getting full body sun exposure, the zenith angle of the sun is insufficient. You can go to, there, there's all sorts of calculators and apps to verify this. It's insufficient to induce cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D. So now's a good time to consider replenishing your body's vitamin D levels. And that's why I'm a huge fan of the essential fatty nutrients that pairs both vitamin D and vitamin K2 in the MK7 form from my science. This is a convenient way to get both vitamin D3 and K2 in one capsule. Check it out. I'll put links below. You can save using the code podcast over at myoscience. 
That's podcast at myoscience to support vitamin D health this winter. It's really important. A lot of people ask about target levels. Aim for a blood level of 65 nanograms per ml. That's a great level. Studies show that's uh, considered optimal. Okay, and most people do not fall into that range. Another paper from Nature, and it's all about excess mortality related directly to COVID-19 infections and also excess mortality that's independently associated with COVID-19. And this could be accidents, this could be starvation, this could be economic disruption, right? Remember when everyone said, we all have to stay in our homes and no one thought about the consequences of locking people in their homes, telling them to close down their businesses, which eventually folded. Economic disruption and, and, and finances are it's impossible to disentangle those from health outcomes and, and from, from more excess mortality. We also have a strange increase in excess mortality globally around January of 2021, and it pre proceeds to continue to increase into January of 2022. I have no idea why that would be just in January of 2021. Do you? I'm not sure. It seems like something happened in, Jan in the year 2021, but I don't know what it is. It, it could be you know, climate change, global warming, or some such thing. And then there's a, a dramatic increase in the curve. We're talking about figure one here, uh, figure 1A. Uh, look at the slope of that curve. That is greater than the slope of the curve that we saw during July of 2020 up until January. And that's when most people, they said, look, I've done the two weeks to flatten the curve. I stayed home for a month. A lot of people, majority of people said, I have to get back to my life. You know, some people continue to wear masks, some didn't. But if you went to Texas, if you went to Florida, I traveled a lot uh, during 2020, had friends at dinner parties. No one ever got sick. We were enjoying life and living life to the fullest, as I suspect you should be doing as well, because we know that social connection we know that meaningful relationships and having purpose, it, humans are meant to, we're tribal creatures. We need to be around other people to be most happy. We, we are not happy and fulfilled and immunologically competent if we're isolated in our homes watching the news all day and scary statistics, okay? But it looks like there is something causing excess deaths here. And who knows what that is? Again, like I said, it's probably just climate change, but I think it's important that we recognize this. Now, what was interesting here is there was a lot of controversy in this paper, and I, I read some of the associated articles um, that were linked here in um, the the added uh, narrative and 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 so forth. Sweden here did not have a dramatic increase in the excess deaths and also COVID nineteen deaths as many predicted. Remember, in Sweden, it was controversial. They didn't do strict lockdowns. They kept schools open, as did Europe, and and so it's interesting that. We, we can learn a lot from history because Sweden was ridiculed in newspapers uh, by the mainstream media for not following the narrative, for uh, committing genocide. You know, some of the leaders were accused of that. Many of the scientists that lived in Sweden where schools were open and tracked deaths in children found that there was really not a statistical increase and children were not dying from COVID like many of the people perceived. And the title of this paper was Open the Schools. Essentially, COVID-19 does not significantly impact children. Remember, we talked about this paper numerous times over the past several years. This scientist got so much blowback, he quit academic research. And that's really un unfortunate because um, many people who ostensibly stand for the science really don't like you sharing science that goes against their uh, sort of totalitarian ideologies uh, in the quest for this utopian zero COVID state, which I mentioned is not achievable whatsoever. It's, it's a utopian idea that is not based in reality. What is based in reality, you might wonder? That is getting healthy. That is exercising. That is walking 10,000 steps per day. That is doing resistance training three or four days per week. That is eating whole, real foods. The statistics are quite fascinating on this. About 57% of the energy that the average American consumes, and this includes North Americans, people in Canada and also Mexico and Latin America, comes from ultra-processed junk food. This is the real contagion. This is the real pathogen that you should strive to always avoid. Maybe 5% of your energy periodically, if you're active, can come from ultra-processed foods. Ultra-processed foods have been shown to cause diabetes, to cause obesity, to cause cerebrovascular disease, dementia. And we, we just recorded this the other day. It's not yet live. But there's a new paper in JAMA Neurology finding for the very first time that consumption of ultra-processed foods, breads, cookies, crackers, treats, uh, McDonald's, uh, you know, uh, mac and cheese. Okay, these are the foods 
that is the real contagion. This is the real triple demic, the obesity, the hypertension, the coronary artery disease. According to this JAMA Neurology Journal, uh, the, the consumption of ultra processed foods actually shrinks the gray matter in the brain, decreases executive function and cognitive capacity, my friends. Now, we know that Alzheimer's disease ranks number four in terms of overall leading cause of mortality, at least here in the US and also in Latin America. It's a, it's a major problem as well as in Canada. So that's the contagion that we should seek to avoid. Now, you might say, well, what, about, what does muscle and obesity have to do with this? Well, this was an interesting article that was just published a few days ago. The title here is The Prevalence of Low Muscle Mass Associated with Obesity in the, in the United States. So more and more papers are talking about, well, it's not just the obesity that's the problem. It's the dearth or the lack of lean mass, of muscle mass, that is making people more prone or more susceptible to developing these age-related chronic diseases, the high blood pressure, the coronary artery disease, the cognitive decline, and, and cancer, and so forth. Now, these estimates between the years of 2017 and 2018, um, they find that about 16% of Americans have too much fat and are under-muscled. And this is just between the ages of 20 and, and 59, and that number actually spikes up um, to about 28% of Americans over the age of 60. So that means one in three adults over the age of 60 is over fat and under-muscled. And that, my friends, as we start to talk about takeaways, that is the problem. That, that is linked with chronic inflammation, which is burning the immune system. So many people, it's been trending on Twitter for about a week now, T-cells. People are talking about T-cells. Oh my gosh, the reason why you want to wear a 2N95 mask everywhere you go is because uh, repeat COVID-19 infections weaken your T-cells. So everyone's focused on T-cells. You know what really screws up your T-cells? Being overweight, <laughs> having blood sugar imbalances. That totally throttles back the repertoire of T-cells. There's regulatory T-cells, there's TH17 T-cells, there's all sorts of T-cells. T-cell immunity is very important. But you know what screws up T-cell immunity? Is being metabolically unhealthy. That is the problem. So all the people that, that want more mandates, more restrictions, right? They want to mask your kid in school because of T-cells, because, oh my gosh, well, if you get COVID twice in a year, your T-cells become exhausted. You know what functionally exhausts T-cells? Being insulin resistant, eating, glu eating processed sugar. All of these things, we've talked about it in my book, Belly Fat Effect, going back to 2014. I wrote that in 2013. T-cell exhaustion is quite common. This is an age-associated thing that really disproportionately impacts people who have metabolic disease. So if you are scared about the fact that, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to wear my mask everywhere I go because T-cell exhaustion is linked with COVID, COVID infections, and so therefore we need to mask forever. Here's the bad news, my friends. COVID is never going away. It's not. So if you're going to wear a mask now, then you're committing to wearing that mask forever. Do you really want to be inhaling microplastics in your mask forever? What are the unintended harms associated with that? From fostering mouth breathing, causing bad breath, dental caries, inhaling microplastics, not seeing faces. I mean, the list goes on, not to mention the, the consequences and the burden on the environment. I mean, remember when it was so important to ban straws and we have to ban gas cars, but all these people are just throwing away these masks every single day. They end up in the ocean. Billions of masks have found their way into the ocean and are damaging wildlife. Where's the concern for the wildlife? I mean, my goodness, we should be focusing on banning junk food, restricting junk food. Uh, there's a Coca-Cola facility near my, my brother's house. And I cannot believe how massive there's like 70 Coca-Cola trucks that do manufacturing here. And literally the market for ultra processed junk food that is killing people, making them more susceptible to influenza, RSV and COVID-19 and also causing diseases like obesity, diabetes, cognitive decline. This is such a big business. Why aren't we talking about restricting those instead of encouraging people to mask again. I mean, where's the, the personal responsibility and the accountability? I'm not sure, my friends, but I think we need to bring this to the forefront of our, our family's conversations uh, around the holiday season. Like, hey, look, I know you're scared of getting sick, but if you're metabolically ill, then you're more prone to getting severely sick. So why don't you work on your metabolic health? It's very simple. You know, optimize your circadian rhythms. Go to bed at the same time every day. Wake up at the same time. Try to get morning sunlight. Very simple. Try to walk 2,500 steps before you have your first meal. Try to get at least 2,000 steps after a major meal.
meal, after lunch, after dinner, go out with your family, try to lift weights, do some push-ups, do air squats, do deadlifts, hip hinges. These things are very simple. Cook your foods at home from scratch using whole real foods. Don't buy stuff that's in box bags or cans. I mean, it's, it's not, this is not rocket science. It's changing small habits and changing your identity. You can change the person that you are today. You can become smarter. You can improve your knowledge. You can become more motivated. I know people lack energy. Energy is a tool that you curate. Many people have fatigue because they're depressed or uh, they don't, don't actually exercise. When you start to become more healthy, you gain more energy so that you can go to the gym and do these things and embark on healthier living strategies. So I just want to share this with you. I know you're having hopefully a great Christmas. Uh, the title here, again, in nature, this was an uh, editorial piece. It was trending on Twitter for a while. There is no room for COVID complacency in 2023. So somehow, somehow, we're three years into flattening the curve or attempting to flatten the curve, and we have completely ignored metabolic health. We have completely ignored obesity. We have not focused whole, on whole real foods or talked about sleep or stress reduction or our relationships, our meaning, our purpose, our work. None of those things. We have not talked about vitamin D. We c experts, so to speak, and pundits continue to talk about vaccine hesitancy and, and encouraging better masks. My friends, we need to talk about the elephant in the room and and the prevalence of low muscle mass and, and excess adiposity is the elephant in the room. We got to make the main thing the main thing, as Stephen Covey has talked a lot about in his various books that I would highly recommend you read if you haven't yet in 2023. So that's it for today, friends. Have a great holiday and thank you as always for tuning in. Thanks for sharing the content. Hope you, hopefully you enjoy these articles and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now. Yeah.